In this video, I'm going to explain my editing process by showing how and why I make certain changes and some tips to consider if you use Photoshop as well for editing. The first thing I do is I will crop the image. How I crop each image depends on how much room the subject is taking up in the frame and how it is positioned in the frame. Like this photo, for example, the caterpillar takes up a good bit of space in the frame. And for images like this and portrait style shots, I will usually use the aspect ratios of five to four or four to three because they are more compact and that works great for these types of shots in my opinion. Vertical crops can also work well with portrait shots because all the focus will be on the subject and its details. I will use a 3 to 2 ratio or smaller for more complex compositions. Shots that show off the surrounding environment suits a 3 to 2 crop ratio well because the broader field of view allows for a more immersed viewing experience. The next thing I do is sharpen the image a little. When I do this, I will just sharpen the whole image because my computer takes forever when I try to just select the subject to sharpen. Next, I will go over to Camera Raw Filter. In here, I make adjustments to the colors, highlights, and textures. I'll increase the textures and clarity a little to make the details stand out better. Me personally, I like a colorful macro photo so I always increase the vibrance in all my photos to make the colors pop. I prefer using the vibrance tool over saturation because saturation is too intense and it can sometimes make an image look unnatural if it's oversaturated. The curves tool is very useful if you want to modify the tonal range, the contrast, and the color balance in a photo. For this shot, I felt like the highlights from the caterpillar's hairs and the leaf were too bright and I also felt like the brown in the background was too strong, so I toned both down to help balance the overall tonal range in the shot. Tonal range just refers to the levels between images darkest and lightest points. I wanted to help balance the dark and light areas in the shot to give the photo a more natural look. A very useful tool in Photoshop is the Selective Color Tool. This will allow you to make adjustments to specific colors in a photo if needed. Some colors such as greens and yellows can sometimes blend in together pretty well, so if you wanted to adjust them separately, this is the tool you will use. Another useful tool is the color balance tool. This can be used to add or take away certain colors in photos or create a different balance of reds, greens, and blues to change the entire look of the photo. This is known as color correction. Next, I will focus on the mid-tones in the photo. The mid-tones refer to the areas in a photo that are neither dark or bright, falling between the highlights and the shadows. So the mid-tones in this shot would be the background colors. I added mid-tones by painting in light into an area on the photo. I start by creating a new layer, then go over to the brush tool, and for the light, I will usually use a light yellow, or I will just use a lighter shade of the background color in the photo I'm editing. I used to use white for the color, but now I feel like white can sometimes be too strong in my opinion. Once I select my color, I'll begin painting it in, and for this image, I decided to have the light come from the top left of the frame since the caterpillar's head is turned that way. Once I'm done painting the layer, I'll change the blending mode to overlay, and the final thing I do is go over to filter, down to blur, and select Gaussian blur. For the radius, it's important to remember that the higher the number, the more spread out the color will be, and the lower the number, the more concentrated the color will be in the area you painted. Something I also do is paint the surrounding sides a dark gray or black to give the image a vignette-like effect and to help put more emphasis on the lighter areas in the photo. Doing this can help give your photo a more interesting background rather than settling with a single toned background.
Once I'm done light painting, the next thing I'll do is some noise reduction to smooth out the background. I'll start by saving a copy of the main image and I use the copy image to copy a stamp from it and paste it onto the main image using the clone stamp tool to recover the lost details on the subject from when I'm done with the noise reduction. The clone stamp tool lets you copy exact detail from one part of an image to another and it is best used for repairing or removing unwanted elements in an image. To select the background, I go over to select, down to color range and click on the background. Once selected, I'll go over to camera raw filter, down to detail and adjust the noise and color noise. Then once I'm done with the noise reduction, I'll use the clone stamp tool to recover the hair details that were lost when I was doing the noise reduction. For the finishing touches, I like adding a little vignette to all my photos to darken the corners and to help tone down the brighter areas in the backgrounds. I also like to play around with color grading tool. Color grading is just another way of enhancing the colors in an image. And the final touch I'll do is adjust the exposure one more time with the exposure tool. So overall, for this photo, the adjustments I made focused on the highlights, exposure, mid-tones, the clarity, and the colors. In my opinion, these things should be the things you focus on when you are editing. I'm not saying your workflow has to be exactly like mine or even similar, because there are several different ways to edit in Photoshop to get similar results. This next edit will be similar to the first since I will be focusing on the same things with my adjustments. I'll again be focusing on the highlights, exposure, mid-tones, the clarity, and color adjustments. Starting off with cropping, I went with a 3 to 2 crop ratio because I felt like it complemented the subject the best. After that, I will sharpen the image a little just to improve the clarity on the subject. Next, I'll go over to Camera Raw Filter and make some adjustments to the exposure, clarity, and the color. If you really wanted to, you could do the majority of your edits in Camera Raw Filter. You can do all of your exposure, clarity, and color adjustments in there alone. So basically how I go about my editing workflow is I will focus on one or two things at a time. Like for the first part of this edit, I focus mainly on the exposure and clarity adjustments. Now I'm going to focus on color and color balance adjustments. I feel like focusing on one thing at a time can help you develop a good workflow that you could get used to and help not be as overwhelmed with all the tools that are on Photoshop.
For the light painting, I wanted the light to come from the top right of the frame since the most space in the frame is on that side. My goal with this one was to give the image a backlight look and to do this, I will have to paint the opposite sides a darker color to help put more emphasis on the lighter areas.
Like I said earlier, the things I think you should focus on when editing macro photos is the highlights, exposure, mid-tones, the clarity, and the colors. If you are new to Photoshop, just experiment with it because there are so many tools on there and there are several different ways you can edit on there. But I hope this video was helpful for you and if you want to see more editing videos, then let me know down in the comments. I'll catch y'all in the next one.